Okay, we're going to try something new here. We're taping our message today, and hopefully we're live on Facebook. Seems to be the growing trend in 2020. Uh, we're not a church, but we are the Hay Hayward Family uh, Ministries. And what we do is we bring our family Bible study to you out there. And we put it on YouTube, we put it on Facebook and SoundCloud, and hope that you get it out, tell your friends, share, like, and just do it to the glory of God. We've been doing a study on evil. And we're up to the ninth study. Now, I've said this before. you got to get all eight studies with ninth study. You're not going to go into this, you know, I did number five, and, well, look what Stiley said. If you don't get them all, you're only going to get half because when we study evil, evil is sin, and yet evil may not be sin. And we've done that all through the introductions. And we're past the introductions. I know this is the first time we're coming live on, on Facebook, but you have to go back in, onto the YouTube channel or the SoundCloud Cloud ch channel, and you got to go through it all. And we're studying the word evil in the Bible because what is evil? What are we doing that is evil? What are we doing that causes evil? I think this coronavirus right now is evil. And as we studied, evil in the sense that it's a judgment of God upon sin, of rejecting God and His Son, Jesus Christ. So, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 4. And we're not doing all the word, all the evil in the Bible. I've picked some out. And we're under the subcategory so far, part 1, of 23 subcategories. And the category we're in right now is adjectives. A describing. Describing evil. And let me recount what we've done so far through the study as you turn to Timothy. Find my place here. We have come across evil animals. We have come across a evil congregation. We have come across an evil place. We have seen an evil generation, evil diseases, evil men of Shechem, evildoers, evil man, evildoers, a congregation of evildoers. We have done the thoughts that are e that are evil, evil women, you got to get men and women involved, evil men, we did man, men, evil people. I said, go back. Go through all these, what we've done. Uh, evil figs, which meant naughty. Evil fruit. Evil adulterous generation. Evil servant, employee. Evil spirits. Deeds that are evil. And the works of the world. We left off in John 7, 7 last time. Now we pick back up. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there's more. Hold on. Evil afflicted against the brethren. Afflictions. Evil things. Evil communications. Evil, this present evil world. And then we left off last week. Evil com computuses. And try to pronounce that word over and over and over. We looked at those things. Eight videos. Eight audio files. Number nine, First Timothy six four. Let's move on. He is proud, pride, pride is a sin. Knowing nothing, oh, Paul. Oh. And look at verse three. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud. Knowing nothing, occult, religious. But doting about questions and stripes of words, whereof cometh envy, that's not good, strife, that's not good, railings, that's not good, 
evil surmising. Here we go. Surmising, suspecting, imagining upon slight evidence, the act of suspecting surmise and evil surmising. Imagine a dictionary, the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, quoting from the Bible. So, what is this evil? This evil is a suspicion or suspect with little or no evidence at all. It wrongly draws the wrong conclusion. In the realm of the church, religion, and education, science, and history, evolution is an evil surmise of the very little and tampered evidence. You know, those, those, those bones that we find of Lucy and all them, they've been filed, they've been tampered with, they had been doctored to teach what they wanted to teach. Christians, uh-oh, wrongfully judge others without the facts. As misquoted by Sergeant Friday, just the facts, man. You know, well, you know, that family didn't come to church. You didn't know if they're sick. Made her out of town. That person, you know, and we look at people in their lives and we, we, we come to a conclusion without knowing anything. You know, that person church over there, it don't, they don't do anything. You don't know how much money they're putting in the, in the plate. You don't know about their prayer life. I think when we get to glory, I think we're going to find out at the judgment seat of Christ. Those that are the less commonly members of the church body were the ones that God listened to in prayer. They're the ones that are prayer. Listen, a person who is, who is bound to a nursing home, bound to a hospital bed, can pray. We all need prayer. We all need to pray. And we ought not to be judging others when we have no facts. What if the cops came up to you right now, put the handcuffs on you, and brought you before a judge, and you end up in jail because no facts? You'd be crying, oh, I need a lawyer, I need to be... And yet, don't we Christians, I said we, don't we Christians sometimes look at other brethren in the church and say, uh, I don't know what's going on. Instead of evil surmising, you know what we should do? Lord, that family's not in church. I hope there's nothing wrong with them. Lord, I hope everything is fine. Lord, if they're not feeling well, help them to be better. Help them get the rest. We ought to change evil surmises into prayer. And the famous catchphrase is just the facts, man. Was never actually said by Jack Webb or the, his character Joe Friday. But it was by Stan Feeberg of the Radio Park series. We thought he said it. But he never said it. And don't we do that. Well, you know, when we hear gossip, you know, this person said, this person did that. And we're going by what somebody said without the facts. And the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. It shall be established. And when we take the word of one person who may be telling the truth or may not be telling the truth, and we go without the facts, we don't ask, we don't seek, and we judge according to, what did I say? Little or no evidence. I would cry foul in the courtroom if I were to be judged without the facts. And yet, I have been evil, surmising of others. And I'm sorry to admit it, but I'm a sinner. So evil surmising. That, that's, that's an adjective. It describes 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. Like I said, we may not be doing all your evil words that you like. 
I picked out the best ones, and I, I thought were two to study. And I want to look at evil. Because we all, I, there, there I am, evil surmising. I've done it. Saved and unsaved people. Have you ever looked at, as you turn to 2 Timothy 3, 3 ever looked at somebody walking on the street, well, you know, that, that guy, he's poor, he, he's miserable, he's rotten, or whatever. And you don't know. We, we have a thing today has been proven by videos. There'll be people on the street corner begging for money. And they're, they, they got the filthy clothes and, and they, you know, they look like they're paying. And they follow the cameras over to a Cadillac. A big fancy car. And they're making tons and tons of money. And police officer told me that they make about $1,000 a day in Daytona Beach. And if I really think that he's homeless and I don't investigate his homelessness and I think and I give him money to be to, because he's homeless, I have been accused by God of evil surmising. I have not taken that person to who he is. I have not checked him out. I have wasted my money. And God's going to hold me accountable to my money. You got to try them out. How far does the Bible really take us? In our, do you realize the Bible says that we're going to have to give an account for everything, even our very thoughts. And if you're thinking about somebody who you don't have the facts ever, have we not ever done that as a husband? I, I'm, I'm a man, a husband. Have you ever thought something of your wife and you don't, gee, I wonder what she's doing. I wonder what, what's going on. What does she do with his wife? You know what? She, and it's not true. Evil surmising. So for a, a wife, so for children, so for the parents. You know, I, I think my child broke that lamp. You know, wait till they get home. We'll get them. You have no proof. And you're sitting there, right? And you see that the wind is blowing. And the wind blows the, the curtain or the window shade. And, oh, you know what? It wasn't the kid. It was the window shade. Evil surmising. 2 Timothy 3.13. You know what I've seen? We sin when we don't even know when we're sinning. I dealt with one guy one time. He said, I never sinned. Ridiculous. Verse 13. Evil men, plural, and seducers shall wax worse and worse. This is this day and age right now. It ain't going to get better. Evolution. It's not prospering. Deceiving and being deceived. Man, as we get closer and closer to the rapture, it's going to get worse. It's going to get terrible. We're going to long for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. And after Jesus comes and takes his church, and the church is not going to be here in the tribulation. Not going to be here in the tribulation. It's going to get worse and worse and worse with, with the Antichrist. But we have here, and we got men. And then repeat, men. And I want you to see the evil men, according to Paul and the Holy Spirit, shall wax gross. Now, we already looked at evil men. Get the video. But what's the evil men here? They're going to get worse. And the proper education today, is, oh, we're all getting great. We're all getting better and better. Why are people going to the store and buying all the toilet paper? I know why. Because you've been teaching them evolution. And what is evolution? The survival of the fittest that I get more toilet paper than you because I'm important. And if I have all the toilet paper, then I'm going to conquer and divide the world. And you, what you've been teaching in school. Why have you gotten all these school shootings? Because, you know, if I get the biggest gun and I go about shooting people hey I'll be the big one I'll be the most important one in the prison and it's only going to get worse and worse because you're taking God out of the schools you're taking God out of the courtroom you're taking God out of the prison and you we are in a, a period right now of coronavirus we are supposed to be in our rooms we're supposed to be in our houses we, we don't have our jobs no more we don't have toilet paper we can't get certain goods at the grocery store and i don't see america i don't see england and i don't see italy and china calling upon god in prayer and you think oh we're gonna have this national revival 
We can't even get a man to repent and get right with God with a threat of a virus that he can get and maybe die from. That doesn't scare him. You think the very fact that he's going to be evil? Is, no. And besides, some preachers say the Bible records that men is getting evil and evil. And they are. When you look at the seven church periods throughout the history, our church period, the Laodicean church period, is wicked and vile that the fact is that Jesus Christ is standing outside the church door. Where the Philadelphia church age, just before ours, it is an open door. Ours is closed. You know, I was thinking the other day, I, 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 behold, I stand at the door and knock and any man open. I haven't got much of a conclusion about this yet, but what if that door that Jesus is knocking on the church door, what would be the fact is that the church doors are closed? And friend, what are the church doors today? Many are closed. You know, the government can step in and they're doing it right now. In Florida, all the parks are closed. All state agencies and, and county agencies and city and town, they're all closed. The governor or even the president of the United States can come up and say, all right, restaurants are closed, are they not? Well, they say, okay, you know what? You can't have church service. We're closing the churches because of the coronavirus. Has not church doors been closed by government officials before? Is that not in the church history? Is that maybe happening in the future? And evil men are getting worse and worse and they're Lumped, let, now watch this, evil men, there, there, there's our topic now, and seducers. You get a cup of coffee, and I don't know how you take it, but I take mine with cream and sugar. All right, evil men, that's a cup of coffee. The seducers, that's the cream. Shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Who is deceiving and deceiving? The pair of evil men and the they are paired with seducers. If there's one thing that evil men and the seducers are going to come up to be, they're going to deceive. I I read the other day or heard the other day that there's somebody, a church, a religion, they're trying to sell this potion that will claim that you will be healed or won't get coronavirus for a fee, of course. Or maybe if you send in a love or that's deceiving. If you, and they're jumping to Psalms. If you say this Psalm, I forget what number what, uh, and, and, you know, God will protect you from the coronavirus. That's deceiving. There are already people, uh, I put it out on my Facebook, there, there may be people that come knocking on your door and they're deceivers. There may be phone calls and it may be deceivers. It may be people coming up and saying, how you doing? We don't believe Jesus is God and we are a religion and we're the 144,000 being 2 billion already. And I'll say to him, hey, excuse me, are you married? And the guy will say, yes, I'm married. Well, 144,000 not married. Do you have children? Yeah, we have children. 144,000 are virgins. Unless you're the, providing the virgin birth, which you can't, you're deceiving. And when we had the Daytona 500 this year, we've been down here since 2011, but say 2012, I had never seen, but this year, the Jehovah Witnesses out on the street, on the sidewalks, every block with their, with their magazines and their people standing there. They're out there by the groves. <laughs> groves, that's Catholic. So what we have here, we have seducers that deceive and it will get worse. I'm sorry, and I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm just saying the government, the government in general of America, England, Italy, China, all around the world, it's gonna get worse. Okay, we solved coronavirus, we got this over, hooray! It's gonna be another problem. Listen, I survived swine flu, I survived the, 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 the 
the chicken flu, uh, Y2K, I survived, anthrax, I survived. There'll be another one. And the next deceiving and seducing man that people won't get the victory over, that will be evil, will be the Antichrist. And when you receive his mark in your forehead or your name, you have been deceived and you are damned to the lake of fire for all eternity. It's going to get worse, worse, worse. And only Jesus Christ is going to bring the peace when he comes back for his nation of Israel to call those Jews, what we believe out of the of Peter, but that place that God prepared for them. But it's going to get worse. I guarantee. Newspapers and the media will make a lot of money out of evil men and seducers that are deceived. And they are being deceived. <laughs> Galatians 6, 7. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2. I'm glad I don't fall in that character. <laughs> Some people think I'm a deceiver and, and all that, but I'm not. I'm trying to get you to write. I'm trying to get you to learn what the Bible says. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Yeah, that's great. I don't. That, that says Hebrews, but that should be for Gentiles too. They're saved. The Jew or Greek in, in the Lord. I want to draw nigh to God. With my heart. With the heart, man, believe it unto right. Not, not, not your head. Having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience. Uh oh, there's that evil. And our bodies washed with the pure water. That's the word. Not baptism. So what we have here is conscience. It's that inner you placed by God to help judge right and wrong when wrong is done. To drive you to repentance and get it right. Now, there's one thing I can thank God for. My mom wasn't saved growing up. She's saved now. Thank you, Lord. My mom did the discipline in my house. And God the Father, though I was unsaved, used my mother, though she was unsaved, to feed my conscience. Now, I'll tell you one particular event I had when I was young. Is I went to the store and I stole a Hot Wheel car. I was a shoplifter. So in the blood. And I got halfway down the street. And you know what? Uh, uh, that little inside of me said, you, you did it wrong. That's stealing. I don't remember exactly. And I put the car back in the package. I went back to the store. I, did, I put it on the shelf. And I walked away. That conscience is, you know, I really should not have said that to my wife. I'm going to go in there. I, I'm going to apologize. Conscience is, boss. I had a preacher tell me, if you lie, you know the best way to stop lying? This is what he told me. He says, take your flesh, go up to the person that you lied to, this is using your conscience, and say, listen, I... Whatever it was of me, I just lied to you. I want to make it known to you that I lied. I apologize. I'm sorry for lying. You know what made you go back to that person to, to confess that your lie or whatever you said is your conscience. Conscience is one of the get best, greatest gifts that God gave to the saved and unsaved man. It's interesting. Good conscience is when you're young, and I said, like, like shoplifting a toy. I went back. Conscience is when you've done wrong, you make it right. After I got saved, I went, I went witnessing. The first person I went to do was with my dad. Now, before I was saved, I had stolen money from my dad. My hey, listen, it's under the blood. The stealing is under the blood. But I still felt, hey, you know what? Something else needs to be done. I sat down, wrote my dad a letter, said, Dad, I stole money from you. I have no idea how much I stole, but you tell me how much, I'll make it. some way I will pay it back to you. My dad said, Nope, I forgive you. You don't owe me nothing. That's the conscious say, hey, I'm under the blood, but I could get it right. Evil conscious, there were times I've sinned. And I'm not gonna tell you. But an evil conscience spoke to me. 
Let it go. Do not worry about it. No one knows. Now here's the evil conscience. And many a time, and many a time, we all listen to that evil conscience. You know, they, they, in the cartoons, you got the, you know, the devil on this side, you got the angel on this side. Angels, are, you know, do good, do good. The devil. <laughs> And there is an evil conscience to say, do wrong. Do wrong. And that evil conscience is set forth in the world and of the world. And it's of the flesh. And it hates God. It hates Jesus. And it fights against the Holy Spirit that indwells in the Christian. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. You can hear those are birds. Proverbs 15, verse 3. They like to hear me talk. They also like him. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. So it's not Santa Claus. It's Jesus Christ, God. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Behold, the evil and the good. Why is evil first? Why didn't God put good first? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It amazes me all the years in my public ministry, people go, I'm good, I'm good. No, you're not. The Bible says there's none good. No. So evil is when your conscience tells you it's okay to sin, and maybe no one knows. Ooh. Ow. How you doing on that sin? Have you ever... Gone with the thought of sinning, whatever the sin is. And the Holy Spirit said, don't do it. And maybe good, some good to, which is God and Jesus, but there was a good that said, you ought not be doing that. I mean, have you ever gone down the road, you're doing 65 miles per hour, the speed limit says 55. I'm supposed to be going, I'm not doing the speed limit, am I? Uh, no cops around. Evil, evil conscience. We need to repent. We need to repent. Whatever is right to do, and we say, well, we're not going to do the right. We're going to do the evil. We're not going to do the good. When we don't do the good, and we think about the evil, that's evil conscience. Now, can you honestly say within yourself, I have never sinned? I can't say it. The very fact is that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all right, unrighteous, uh, cleanses from all unrighteousness. The very fact that he says, if I sin, shows I've got an evil conscience. That flesh is still in me, Paul writes. The spirit's there, the flesh's there, and they battle each other. The Holy Spirit wants me to have the good conscience. The flesh wants me to have the evil conscience. James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verse 4. And we got other characters. So don't, don't say, all right, look at that. He's getting closer to Revelation. Oh, man. No, no. We, we, got, we got much more. This is page 8 of 54. This is just adjective describing an evil. The description of conscience is evil. The description of men is evil. That's what we're looking at. This is the first topic of this study and this just so you know the other topics will be a bad deed criminal and capital punishment good versus evil the heart innocence judgment of god we got all kinds of rebellion we even got one called sex i put that in the middle because everybody's always interested in sex that's the most popular subject i've ever seen james chapter 2 verse 4 are ye not then partial in yourselves and are you become judges of evil thoughts? Uh-oh, evil thoughts. There it is. Can I say? We're going to be judged for our thoughts. Judge for our thoughts. Our thoughts are able to be evil. Did, did I need to tell you that? That's why people don't... Uh, Mark Twain said, It's not what is in the Bible I don't know. It's what in the Bible I do know. And our thoughts... And the chapter, uh, uh, the James chapter 2 is talking about cliques. Oh, you're rich and famous. Come over here on my side. 
I, I can't you, you you're miserable you're poor you're a bible christian i don't want to have you i've been in churches like that you guys go out in public ministry you tell about jesus and you witness about jesus and you scream at people we don't want you but we want somebody who's going to put more money into play. We want somebody who, who can do something for us. That falls into evil thoughts. Evil judgment. And then we say that, you know, when you look at somebody and you judge them because, oh, they're not in church. They're not in church. Where are they? Where are they? Evil surmises, Remember? Evil surmises and evil thoughts and evil surmises, and they go together. What are you thinking? And when you're doing evil surmising, are you not doing evil thoughts? How about this one? And I can give you scripture. Evil thoughts. Ooh, that's a nice girl. Wow. Jesus says, whosoever looketh upon a woman the lust after her in his heart. A very red heart. Has already committed adultery with her. Are you thinking about it? What's the danger of pornography? What are you thinking? Does pornography bring good thoughts? Or does it bring evil thoughts? Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. Impartial or partial to others. So evil here is judging. A wrongly judging. And again, we see this with the evil surmising. And when you be charged, talking to Christians, when you be charged, wood, hay, or stubble as evil surmisings, if you have that charge, we do, you will also be doubled added to with the evil thoughts. One sin has brought another sin. And yet James tells us, if we'd be guilty of one deed of the Lord, we're guilty of them all. And they say it's only one sin. It's never one sin. So what we have here is impartial. Partiality to others by appearance, wealth, and social status. That's evil. You want me really hit the nail on the hammer now? Do you want me to kick you and knock you down and get you angry? I go for the Republicans over the Democrats. You're partial and being impartial. That's evil. See, the Republicans are the bad. The Democrats will help America. The, America. the Democrats will give us the answer. And you've sinned against God. You realize everybody that is in office, Republican, Democrat, Independent, whatever power they are, you realize they are put in there by the authority of God. And when you big mouth about them and you rank on them and you and you cuss them out and, and you and you putrefy their name, evil thoughts come out of your head, come out of your mouth, come out of your hands, typing. Bible says we are to speck and we're to pray for our rulers. Comes from the heart. Comes from the heart. All right, we're gonna do five at a time, James 3:8. You still with me on that one? James 3 8. James 3 8. Uh oh. You know James chapter 3. <laughs> da, 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 da. This thing has no bone. <laughs> the tongue. All right. 3 8. No idea. But the tongue can no man tame. No man. What did the Bible say? No man. Oh, I could, I could, I could. No, you can't. You may be able today. You may be able next week. You may be able next month. Eventually, your heart is going to speak through your tongue. Where did that cuss word come out? From your heart. And you couldn't control your tongue. I insulted that person. Oh, how did that? I am so sorry. No, you're not. You've been thinking about it. Evil thoughts comes out of the evil tongue. Oh, oh boy. See how they're all connected? And this is only 30. 
30 times we've looked at the word evil. I didn't finish the verse, did I? You want me to go any further? No man can tame. It is an unruly evil. Full of deadly poison. Ah. Unruly means disregarding restraint. Disposed of violent laws. Turbulent. Ungovernable. As an unruly youth. An evil tongue. It violates the word of God and the love of God. It is sin. You know who has the most vile, evil tongue in the world? We do. Have you ever said anything that hurt somebody else? Ever? You know, when I grew up, I'm 51 years old now. I grew up in school. It used to be sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. That's a god-awful lie out of hell. Because I have grown to see women who have been battered by their husbands. And I ain't talking with a fist. I ain't talking with a baseball bat. I ain't talking with a belt. I'm talking about with a mouth. I have seen children belittled because of the mouth. Not the, not the hand. Not a gun. Not a knife. But the mouth. And I have, in growing up in school, I have used my evil tongue and I had belittled people I wish I could go back and make right. And I wonder what kind of damage I've done. And we need to look at history. What is the most vilest tongue so far that I can think of that has caused the most damage? The tongue would be out of Hitler. Look how many lives were destroyed. I'm, I'm not talking about the people who died. I mean, millions of Jewish people and other nationalities killed. But look at all the lives from those deaths of the concentration camp that were affected by people who were still living through that mess. There are people, I don't know, right now in 2020, but there were people definitely who had to get medical help, had to get psychiatric help. They had to get spiritual help from their rabbi, from a pastor, from somebody, because the horrors of that man's tongue, that the fact is he grew the whole world into a world war because of his tongue. Our boys died on the battlefields in England and in Europe and all over the world because that man's tongue. And we got to realize that the power of our tongue can be just as horrible, especially as a religion. And you say, what do you mean as a religion? When you get up in a pulpit, a platform, or whatever you have, and you speak damnable, deceiving lies to a congregation, whatever you call them, and you have them to think that God is pleased with them. And they die and wake up in hell because of that deceiver's tongue. And I think we did deceiving. And yet God put it in writing. I have it in writing. Black and white and some Bibles have read the words of Christ. And maybe you yourself know somebody or have known somebody that their tongue has caused great hardship and trouble. And yet, do you not realize that our tongue, my tongue, can do the same thing? We are capable. So I've got to guard it because... What did he say? No man can tame. Sally, you're, you're a Bible believer. You're a King James Bible. You're saved. You go out and preach. and I can let this tongue go out and cause terror. I've gotten angry street preaching at somebody who, who, who gave me a hard time. I not got angry, but I got angry. And some of the things I've said, well, maybe I did great harm to the name of Jesus Christ. That is evil. 
I have said things to Christians and ought not have been said. I have done evil. I have done I have said things to Christians that need to be said, but maybe I should have prayed about it a little more. I thank God a little bit. I, I, I hold my tongue a little bit times, and sometimes I say it in these public ministries, and if they listen, they hear it, hoping the Lord will spike their heart. But have we ever judged somebody without the facts? Have we ever spoke evil? Have we ever had any partiality? Have we ever taken part in what that is evil? Now, primarily, we're looking at evil as a sin. But let's look at the consequences real quick. Right now, we're talking about the tongue. I said something terrible about something. That's an evil tongue. Hey, evil tongue. Now, what? That, that, that's a sin. That's a sin. Saying what you're not supposed to be saying and do harm to others. That's it. Now, let's look at evil as now as a consequence. What did I do to that person? Now, my evil sin has caused evil that is not a sin to somebody else. And that's why you got to get all these studies because evil is a sin and yet evil is a consequence of sin. Coronavirus is not evil. And somebody's and somebody going to say, oh, did you just hear what he said? Coronavirus is not evil. Now, you didn't get all the facts, did you? Coronavirus is, a, is an evil as a result from sin. And, and when we did introductory one, we did three introductions. I said that about, about the tobacco plant. I said that about the marijuana plant. You got to go get it. And I said about barley, making alcohol. I gave you the illustration. And when you put the evil in the wrong context, you're not going to get the study. And when we look at ourselves and the evil that we do, don't aren't we supposed to say we're guilty? You may not have been guilty today. But if you have been guilty of what I said today, in order to get a pardon, in order to confess your sins and get that cleaning by God, you've got to say, Lord... The five things of evil he spoke about today. I'm guilty of one. I'm guilty of two. I'm guilty of three. I'm guilty of four. I'm guilty of all five, Lord. I'm going to go back and get the other 30. See, as born-again Bible-believing Christians, we are not immune to evil. We've still got that flesh in us. And how about our conscience? How, how's your conscience doing? Is it perfect? Are you going to go to the judgment seat of Christ and just have all gold, all silver, and all precious? You're going to have no wood or hay stuff. None. And you're deceiving yourself. And if we looked at evils as seducers and deceiving, they're going to get worse and worse. And if you think you're so great and that God is so happy with you, you're deceiving yourself, and that's evil. You're a part of the evil men that think they're all so wonderful and great, and we're getting greater and better and everything like that. You're evil. That's why we're doing these studies. Because I want you to grow in the Lord. I want you to be right with the Lord. I want the Lord to say, well done. And I hope you'll go through all these studies. I hope you'll share them. I hope you will get them out to your friends. I hope you'll like them. Hope you review them. Look at the scriptures as we do it. They're free, uncopyrighted. And listen, if you misplace what I said, you cut and splice, that's between you and God. God knows what I said. Christians who have watched this know what I said. To the honor and glory of God, thank you for listening. May we see who we are. May we keep looking to Jesus. Thank you.